So refraction through a prism. Here is the index. We are going to talk about the refraction and refraction through a prism. These two areas we are going to cover now. Refraction is nothing but bending of a wave when it enters into a medium where its speed is different. The refraction of light when it passes from a fast medium to a slow medium, it bends the light ray towards the normal to the boundary between the two media. Here I am trying to represent a ray of light passing through a triangular prism as shown here. In this, the passage of light through A, B, C, the angle of incidence I and refraction at the first surface AB are I and R1. Well, the angle of incidence from glass to air at the second phase AC is given by R2. So that's referred to as angle of refraction or emergence E. So this is incidence. This is refraction. This is another refraction and it came out. The angle between the emergent R, yes, and the direction of the incident ray P, Q. So this is the ray from here it goes, refractor and it came down. So this is called as angle of deviation delta. In the quadrilateral A, Q, N, R. Two of the angles at the vertices are Q and R are at right angles. Therefore, the sum of the other angles of the quadrilateral is 180 degree. So obviously, angle A and Q and R is equal to 180 degree. And from the triangle Q and R, you got R1. R2 and Q N R. These three angles, if you add it, you got 180 degree. So R1 is the angle of refraction at AB, and R2 is the angle A of incidence at AC, and delta is the angle of deviation. We got angle A, Q and R is equal to 180 degree and this triangle we got 180 degree. Comparing these equations, uh, removing this Q and R, you got R1 plus R2 is equal to A. The total deviation delta is a sum of deviation at the fa two phases. We got sigma or its delta is equal to I minus R1 plus E minus R2. So this is the equation from the delta is equal to I plus E minus A replacing your R1 and R2. Thus the angle of deviation depends on the angle of incidence. A plot between the angle of deviation versus angle of incidence is made. You can see that in general any given value of delta except for i is equal to e correspond to two values i and hence of e. You can see it here. This in fact is represented from the symmetry of i and e. This is the equation. So delta remains the same if I and E are interchanged. We don't have any problem. 
Physically, this is related to the fact that a path of ray is depicted over here and be traced back, resulting in the same angle of deviation. At the minimum deviation dm, the refracted ray inside the prism becomes parallel to its base. We have delta is equal to dm, i is equal to e, which implies r1 is equal to r2. So, r1 equal to r2, r1 plus r2 is equal to a, which indicates a 2r is equal to a and r is equal to a by 2. In the same way, equation 2 gives sigma is equal to i plus e minus a, replacing a sigma with a dm and i with e, you got dm is equal to 2i minus a, so i is equal to a plus dm divided by 2. We talk about the refractive index of the prism N21, which is nothing but N2 by N1. So, replacing the value of N2, the sin A plus dm by 2 and sin A by 2. The angles A and dm can be measured experimentally. So, equation 5 thus produces and provides a method of determining the refractive index of the prism. For a small angle prism, a thin prism dm is also very small and we get so n21 replacing a sign, removing the sign you get a plus dm by 2 divided by a by 2. So dm is equal to n21 minus 1 into a. It implies that thin prisms do not deviate like much.